Hello, and welcome to lesson seven of how to study the Bible. Hope and pray that you are all in good health. And we hope and pray that this study has been a, a, a good resource for you in your quest to study the Bible and gaining the fulfillment that you need. So with every week, as we start our class, we do our meditation moment. So today we're gonna to do a self-reflection, but we're still gonna ask you to close your eyes, to close your eyes, take those deep breaths, inhale and exhale, inhale and exhale. You take those deep breaths, feel the breath as it rise and fall. Feel your body as it sinks into your chair, feel the weight of your arms as they lay on your legs, uh, just, Pay uh, close attention to your your body as that deep as you take those deep breaths and rise and fall. As all as always, we don't want you to try to clear your mind. Let your mind be free. Don't try to contain it. Um, if it starts to wander, just acknowledge those thoughts. Acknowledge those thoughts and let them float on. Uh, this morning, like I said, we're going to do a self reflection. So as your eyes is closed are closed. We ask you to think on the phrase, you are worthy. You are worthy. Take a few seconds, a few moments, and just think on that as you take those deep breaths, rise, fall, inhale, and exhale. You are worthy. All right, now let's come back. You can open up your eyes and let's get ready to start lesson seven of how to study the Bible. Now that we've marked up Colossians like we did in the, in the last lesson, how we marked up Colossians, let's begin to put together our observation worksheet. To put the observation worksheet together, let's ask a few questions. Let's ask a few questions about what we have learned about Colossians. All right, one thing that we've learned uh, that the chapters, especially chapter one, uh, it mentions Jesus the most. Chapter one mentions Jesus the most. And I have up there what chapter mentions Jesus the most. So I've already given you that answer that chapter one does. And then uh, another observation uh, observation question that you can ask, which chapter has the most warnings of dangerous practices and beliefs? And then we can ask the question, the third question, which chapter has the most instructions and commands? And then lastly, we can ask the question, what thought seems prevalent throughout the entire book of Colossians? So what we can do now is we can take a look at the observation worksheet. So the observation worksheet, I have it up here. Um, the first section that you have in your observation worksheet, you have the author and the recipients. We have that the author is Paul. Timothy is mentioned because he, he talks, Paul talks throughout Colossians and he used the plural of of, of, of we and us and in the first verse he also mentioned Timothy as his as his co-author and then also the recipients are the Colossians so as we uh, said a few moments ago we asked the question what chapter mentioned Jesus the most chapter one contains the basic principles about Christ and Paul's ministry purpose so that chapter one uh, contains uh, the most mentions of Jesus. And then your second observation point, what chapter has the most warnings? As you have read uh, Colossians more than one time, hopefully more than two to three times, you see that chapter two reflects uh, the warnings of dangerous practices and beliefs. And as we go on, we say, oh, what chapters has the most instructions? Chapter three shows the most commands and instructions to the audience regarding sound doctrine. And then lastly, we ask, what thought seems prevalent throughout the book? 
what thought seems prevalent throughout the book of Colossians? The epistle to the Colossians declares Christ's supremacy over the entire created universe and exhorts Christians to lead godly lives. So the letter consists of two parts. First, a doctrinal section. Then second section is regarding conduct. So those are the thoughts that are prevalent throughout the book of Colossians, the doctrinal sections, and then uh, your conduct. All right, so that's all the observation worksheet is. You can make those questions uh, up to, uh, that's up to your discretion, what your questions will be for your observation uh, worksheet. But those are the things that stuck out the most uh, to me. So yours, as we've mentioned throughout these lessons, yours might look a little different, but I just wanted to give you a picture of what uh, my observation chart and some examples of how you can construct your observation chart. All right, so as we go back to the lesson, uh, we see uh, what are the points? We are at the point, and uh, we are at the point where we can put together, we can put together the theme of Colossians. Paul's message to the Colossians can be summarized based on our studies. So this message to, to the Colossians can be summarized based on our studies. We can ascertain that, uh, that the sum, we can ascertain the summary by collecting the information on what the book is about, what words are repeated over and over, and is this text, scripture, or phrase important to understanding the book? So let me say that again. What words are repeated over and over? And is this text or the scripture or the phrase in the scripture important to understanding this book? Once we have the main idea, we want you to try to find a passage that validates that point. We want you to find a passage that validates that point. And if you recall at the end of lesson six, we pretty much told you what the what the theme of the entire book is. We said it was Colossians 2, verses 9 and 10. For in Christ all fullness of the deity lives in bodily form, and in Christ you have been brought to the fullness. He is the head over every power and authority. All right, so that is the theme as I see it uh, for Colossians. And then you want to remember, we want to make uh, uh, one very important uh, reminder that I want to give to you. Remember, the shorter your theme, the easier it is for you to remember. So you don't have to make this elaborate theme. And, and like I said, this is totally up to you, but you don't have to make an elaborate, long uh, theme of the uh, for the book of Colossians. It can be short and simple, short and sweet. Um, but that's your choice, but it's easier for you to remember if it is a little shorter. I know it is for me. So when we think about the theme of the Colossians, several phrases come to mind. When you think about the theme of the Colossians, of Colossians uh, several phrases come to mind uh, as well. So I have listed three that I, that I have seen uh, in the book of Colossians as we talk about the theme that could be. Uh, in him, you have been made complete. That can be the theme for the whole book. Or it could be Christ is all and in all. Thirdly, Christ is in you, Christ in you, the hope of glory. And those are just suggestions of what your, what your theme could be. But you may ask, why? Why didn't we use one of the warnings or commands to godly living as a thing? That answer, the answer is kind of simple. Paul's focus is on the truth about Christ and his sufficiency. That's what Paul focuses on. It's on his on the truth about Christ and Christ's sufficiency. The focus remains on Christ as to who he is, what he has done, and our future with him. So the incentive is to live a godly life and to avoid the dangers that could pull us away from the doctrine of Christ. We get that? So that's what the incentives, uh, the incentive of Colossians is, is to, that's what it's teaching you to live a godly life, to avoid the dangers and to avoid the dangers that could pull you away from 
the doctrine of Christ. So that's why we didn't want to focus on just the warning. We want to look at his overall picture. The overall picture that Paul is trying to get us to see is that Christ um, is the truth and he is sufficient in all ways. I hope I made that clear. So, so now that we have the theme kind of put together, we've kind of showed you the observation worksheet. Let's move into the, the at a glance chart or the at a glance worksheet. We can now create that. So the at a glance chart is a summary flow. It's a summary flow of the book that you are studying. It's kind of like a flow chart of the book that you are studying. So how do you fill in the at a glance worksheet? How do you fill in that at a glance chart? Well, you start off at the top of the chart. You start off at the top of the chart and you put the theme of the book. Then within the chart itself, I'll show an example of this as we as we go through this uh, at, the, at the end of me telling you what all needs to go in, I'll show you, I'll come back around and show you what that looks like. But then secondly, you want to, you want to record the chapter theme since there's only four chapters uh, in the book of Colossians. We're only going to have four segments for you to record your chapter theme. And then lastly, you're going to create a segment division that, that kind of demonstrates the uh, topic relations. So that's going to go along the side of your at a glance worksheet. Uh, it all come together. I, I, I might have it where you can't see that picture right now, but trust me, when I show you the example, it'll, it'll become clear. So when developing your chapter theme, you want to keep your book theme in mind. All right. So when you're developing your chapter theme, you want to keep the theme of the overall book in mind. So when you're doing your chapter theme, you want to find a phrase or passage, and it has to be different from each chapter. You don't want to put the same um, same thing for each chapter because that will, will lead to be uh, confusing. Uh, they should be, each chapter should stand on it on its own with its own chapter theme, all right? So as we look through this, as we look through uh, this, as we talk about chapter one, and we're trying to pull out those chapter themes, so here are some, some possible chapter themes for the book of Colossians. If we look at chapter one, as we said previously, chapter one is mostly about the ministry uh, of Paul and Jesus. So possible chapter theme could be the theme or the image of the invisible God. Or it could be the head of the body. It could also be every man is complete in Christ. So those are two, those are three chapter themes that we can put in our at a glance worksheet for chapter one. And then if we go to chapter two, we know that chapter two contains the warnings, right? So we said first that uh, we want to look at those, those themes for that chapter two that deals with warnings. So the first one could be don't be deluded by persuasive arguments. Second could be, don't be taken captive. Third, let no one judge you. And then fourthly, let no one keep defrauding you. If you remember chapter two, all of these are phrases taken out of uh, particular scriptures in chapter two. So those could be your theme. And then as we go on to chapter three, we have, it contains the commands to godly living. Those are where those instructions came in. So the first one could be keep seeking the things above. Secondly, could be let the word of God richly dwell within you. Then thirdly could be do all in the name of the Lord. Those were all commands, command, command, uh, contains, I'm sorry. Those were all commands contained in chapter three. So we can pick any one of those, or you can put all three of them in, in your at a glance worksheet, but that's for chapter three. Then as we move on to chapter four, uh, those also contains commands to God to live in, but it kind of, um, uh, it's a little different, but it still are, there still are commands. So you wanna uh, pick those themes out 
that are contained in chapter four. So first one could be devote yourself to prayer. Also, it could be be wise toward outsiders. Thirdly, it could be let your speech always be with grace. Those are commands that are contained uh, in chapter four. So I want you to, to, to think about those as you put your at a glance worksheet together. I want you to be sure when you, especially with the Colossians, uh, be sure not to pick out a command directed to a particular people. All right. Be sure not to pick out a command directed to a particular people for your chapter theme. These type of commands are individual and not inclusive. So an example of that is um, in Colossians 3, 18 through 22, when it says, wives, be subject to your husband. Those are specific commands to individuals. You see where I'm coming from? If you look at Colossians 3, 18 through 22, you'll see those are individual commands and they're not, uh, they are not inclusive to all because that doesn't, those criteria don't fit everybody. So you want to find a chapter theme that is inclusive of everybody. So the chapter themes that I showed for chapter four and chapter three are commands and instructions that are inclusive for all, like we have here in chapter four, we still say devote yourself to prayer. That's inclusive to everybody. So that's why that makes a good chapter thing. If we go back to chapter three, it says keep seeking the things above. That is inclusive of all. Do all in the name of the Lord. That is inclusive of everybody. That fits the criteria for everybody. So that's why we include that as a chap as a possible chapter thing. Hope I made that clear. Then finally, finally, we map out the segment division. We map out the segment division. So we see that chapter one, it dealt with the doctrine. Uh, chapter two was focused on warnings. And then chapter three and four were practical in commands. All right. So let's take a look at uh, the at a glance uh, worksheet that I put together. So at the top of my at a glance worksheet, Colossians at a glance, I have the theme there, the theme of Colossians. Christ is all and in all. Christ, the fullness of God and the preeminent, all sufficient Savior. All right, that's the theme. Author is Paul. Could also put in parentheses Timothy, uh, the date 61, 63 AD. The purpose. Paul's purpose was to refute the Colossian heresy, and to accomplish this goal, he exalted Christ. That's the purpose. And then the key verse, as we've mentioned several times, Colossians 2, verses 9 through 10. For in Christ, all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form, and in Christ you have been brought to fullness. He is the head over every power and authority. So then when we break down the at a glance uh, worksheet for Colossians, like I said, you have your chapter theme and you have your segment division. Under your chapter themes, you have chapters, the, all the chapters that are in the book that you're studying for Colossians, chapter one, two, three, and four. And you see, I put exactly what I had in my, in the slides that I was showing. I just copied and put those, drop those right into my, uh, at a glance worksheet. So chapter one theme, as we said, the image of the invisible God, the head of the body, every man complete in Christ. Chapter two, don't be deluded by persuasive arguments. Don't be taken captive. Let no one judge you. Let no one keep defrauding you. Then chapter three, keep seeking the things above. Let the word of God richly dwell within you. Do all in the name of the Lord. And finally, chapter four, as, a, as the theme that I saw, devote yourself to prayer. Be wise toward outsiders. Let your speech always be with grace. So those are the chapter themes for the book of Colossians. All right. And then over to the uh, left of the at a glance chart, you see the segment division. And those segment divisions just a breakdown of what 
the chapter is about. Chapter one is dealing with doctrine. Chapter two is dealing with warnings. Chapter three is dealing with practical commands. And chapter four are, are as I would say, a, a reminder as he closes out the, uh, the book of Colossians. So that's all your at a glance uh, worksheet. That's how your at a glance worksheet should look. It should have your chapter themes, your segment divisions, and then at the top of your of your of your worksheet, you should have the theme, author, the date, the purpose, and key verse. The key verse can be interchangeable. You can either have a key verse or you can have key words. Whichever one you feel comfortable with doing is is fine. All right. So what we've done throughout these last two lessons, we we marked keywords, we designated the phrase uh, that are warning and, and also those that are instructions. Uh, we found the scripture that is the theme for the entire book of Colossians. And then today we did the observation worksheet and we did the at a glance worksheet. So when you put this all together with the other techniques that we have uh, we've uh, we've studied on or that we've illustrated and demonstrated, you have a real good view of the book that we are studying. So as as we look as we look at the lessons that we've studied in totality, as we look at all of those lessons that we're studying, um, going back to lesson one all the way up to now. My hope is that it has been a benefit to the growth, to your growth as a Christian through your study of the Bible. So when you put all of those techniques that we've talked about from lesson one all the way to lesson seven, they should give you a real good picture or overview uh, of the book that you are studying. Some reference material that I used throughout this uh, throughout this series was How to Study the Bible by Robert West and also How to Study the Bible by K. Arthur. And also it's a YouTube channel called The Bible Project. I, I subscribe to that as well and it has real useful study material of, of every book of the of the Bible. So those are some real good uh, study and reference material that you can use to help you become more proficient in studying the Bible. And as always, if you have any questions, uh, please send me an email. Uh, email address is tech at marcellusavenuecoc.org. That is T-E-C-H at marcellusavenuecoc.org. Again, like I said, I hope this series of lessons have been beneficial to you, and I hope you've gained uh, some enlightenment uh, of of techniques that you can try, uh, and 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 one thing that I want, if you don't leave out of out of these lessons without anything, but one thing that I want you to know is that you can do this. You can find the insight that you need by studying God's Word. Don't get overwhelmed. Take it slow. Read the chapter, the book, the verses. Read them more than one time so you can get the understanding that God is trying to show you. All right. As always, God bless. And I hope you have a great, great week. Thank you.